Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Cutts, and you're watching my video on guided bone regeneration. So this is a video post lockdown. There's a couple of implants I've placed on the lower right hand side pre the lockdown, uh, where we've had some camera session. And so on the left hand side, we've got with this case, um, we've got to rebuild the width of jawbone. So we've got adequate height, but the CT scan revealed inadequate width. So here I'm just doing a a vertical relieving incision mesially, and this is to avoid uh, fibres of the mental foramen, uh, which then come and supply the lower lip, so preventing any lip paresthesia, or trying to minimise the risk. And then once we've made our incisions, we just raise the periosteum and the mucosa, and almost do like a little blunt dissection with the tip of the blade, Try and raise the periosteum cleanly. It's uh, in the lower left two, three, four, five region is where we're going to be rebuilding the bone. As you can see, we just kind of sometimes the mucosa and the peri the, the keratinized mucosa in the periosteum can get quite stuck, especially around you can see uh, quite a bony irregularity. So we just elevate the, the little lingual flap. You can see that I've speeded up the video because it's quite a slow process to do it atraumatically. And then we just, again, just try and release distally. So the mental frame will be uh, from the CT scan uh, distal to where we're working. And so just keep elevating and you can see we've incised a few of the lateral uh, mentalis fibers and just checking that the tissues are released lingually. I always like to make a couple of dimples in the in the ridge where I plan to place my implants in the future and that's so that when I come back to re-scan with the CT uh, I've got some very clear anatomical marks to look at. So as we can see we've got lovely uh, um, flat mobility and then we just start adding our cerebrum. So this is a Botus product, it's bovine in origin uh, it works really well, forms a very solid bone-like material, very dimensionally stable for a very long time, easy to handle, and it just likes to get a bit of blood seeping in. You can see that I'm packing an awful lot here, hence why I've speeded up the video quite a bit. Just use a very simple little boozer elevator just to pack it in there. And this is where it's, it's critical that we have you know, very good flat mobility, which is all the hard work done at the start. You can see that the flap approximates. And then I just use a, uh, a, a Perio probe that's graduated with millimeters to check dimensions. And so I'm looking that I've actually rebuilt the ridge enough for future implant placement. That's something that often gets forgotten about. You know, we need to check that we can actually put implants into our graft. Uh, this is Jason membrane, which is a porcine pericardium. And we can just try it in for size and then trim it as necessary. And it's, it remains quite rigid. It's, it's really lovely to handle for me. And we can just tuck it in again. Again, you can see I've speeded up the video because it's a very slow process. And I always like to tuck it in under the lingual flap too. And then we can start suturing closed. So here I've used a series of interrupted, simple interrupted sutures. There's a variety of choices. You can use, you know, like a mattress suture, either a locking or a non-locking. Um, but for for ease of this case and approximation, I just went for a series of, of very simple, simple sutures. 
simple interrupted. And, and it's all passive primary closure, so it all, all approximates together nicely, there's no tension. And then the small distal relieving incision. There we go, and we can see we've now got a nice significant ridge rebuild.